So um, I'll just give you a little bit of my background and kind of how I got into this. I was in hospitality for about 10 years. I worked in restaurants and uh, wedding and event planning for a little while. And what I found is I loved all of that like back end operation stuff. Uh, I worked for a corporate restaurant here in Columbus, Ohio for a bit and did their event planning and management. And then I actually got let go from my job. So I accidentally became an entrepreneur, dived into uh, my own business, but it looked a lot different when I first started. I was actually a professional organizer and I went into people's houses and helped them to organize their homes. Um, I'm actually a mom of twins. So I went into a lot of twin moms homes and tried to declutter and the whole Marie Kondo thing so that uh, those moms could be stress-free while they were running their, their families. Um, after I got into that, I had no idea what I was doing running a business because I just kind of jumped into it. So hired a business coach and she showed me this whole online business space. And because I was able to make a bigger impact and reach more than just Columbus, I kind of dived into the online business thing. And I did productivity coaching for a little bit. What I found was there was just tons of business owners that were amazing at what they did, but the back end business day to day operations type of stuff fell through the cracks. So, saw a huge need for that, kind of shifted into systems consulting, and then um, the podcast came from that. I have a membership site, of courses, of all these different ways that I help entrepreneurs, but it's all back end operations. So, super fun stuff uh, for, for me, not for most people. Most people don't love that. <laughs> uh, so, some of the things that we kind of focus on at Brittany and Co is project and operations management. So like I said, all of that kind of day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, we also look at process improvement and really helping businesses to become more efficient. Or if you're not a business yet, helping you get processes in place so that you can become an efficient business. Uh, client and team management. So this is anything from customers, clients, uh, the members on your team, anybody that works for you, making sure that you have really great communication in place, and then just general time and efficiency management because we all need that. So um, some of the things I'm going to cover today is just kind of the business basics and the things that you should have in place for foundations for your business to make sure that you actually have a sustainable business and not just kind of that side hustle uh, really turning into a business. Then we're going to look at some of the strategy stuff and some of the different planning things that you should be looking at and thinking about so that you can, again, have a really good foundation to build a business on. And then some of the different systems, tools, and things that you need to actually manage the back end pieces of your business. So, and I never know where to, oh, I went too far. I never know where to put this crazy bar here. There we go. <laughs> um, so most of you probably have some sort of creative hu side hustle. I'd love to know if you want to drop in the comments what you do or what your creative thing is that you're maybe trying to turn into a business. I always find that super interesting, but um, it, you have something that you love doing and maybe you've kind of started turning into business. Maybe you want to turn it into a bigger business. You want to grow it. Uh, but in order to do that, you need to have some core things in place to make sure that it's not just kind of a hobby and it's something that can grow into a business for you. So um, some of those key features, and some of these are pretty basic, but just kind of making sure we have those foundations in place are having some sort of legal structure for your business instead of just kind of doing it on your own. Uh, so this might be something like an LLC, which is actually what I've done with my business. And it really is just to kind of protect you and make sure that your business is kind of a separate entity from yourself just in case something were to happen. Um, so some of those legal business things would be like filing for an LLC, going through and making sure you have contracts in place, agreements, different things like that, just so that you're kind of legally protected and making sure that um, it's kind of a separate entity in its own. Another piece of that becomes the separate business bank account. And especially when you're starting a side hustle or kind of just doing something that maybe was a hobby that started turning into something monetary, a lot of people don't separate their personal money and their business money. And it's fine at first, but in order to build a sustainable business that you're gonna grow, you really want to think about having separate bank accounts because again, it just kind of separates the business from the personal and make sure that if something happens, that it's completely separated. Um, some things too to consider would be maybe insurance, uh, depending on what field or niche you're in, this may or may not be necessary, but making sure again, you kind of have covered your basis legally. 
And then one of the biggest things I think is super, super important, especially when you're starting to turn maybe a side hustle into a business is having a really good basic business plan of what you're trying to turn this thing into. So this would be a summary of what you're going to provide, what kind of problems you're going to solve, who you're going to help, those types of things. Um, and then really diving into your target market and doing that market research to make sure what you're doing could be something that can be turned into monetary. And then looking at your different products or services and kind of the pricing model around how you're going to monetize this. And then the last thing is your marketing plan. So um, you can do all of these things in the background, but if you don't have a way to get your product or service out into the marketplace, um, nobody's gonna know about you. So we need to make sure we have a basic marketing plan in place as well. Again, I think these things are probably very, very basic, but um, making sure that you have these foundations in place is gonna make sure that you're set up for success in the long run. All right, and then we're gonna dive into some strategy stuff. And um, again, this is foundational stuff, but I think it's really, really important to have these things in place because if you don't have that big picture vision of where you're wanting to take this and where you're wanting to go with this thing that you're turning into a business, it's gonna be really hard to kind of stay on track with goals and stay on track with growing this. So I actually teach my clients my method. It's called the road to scalability method. And this is the R in the road to scalability method is the most important part. It's the recognition phase where you're recognizing where that business stands and who you're going to serve and your mission and your vision and your values. Uh, because these things are again, the core of your business and they play a really important part in making decisions moving forward. Um, so essentially you can go on a road trip with no map, right? No map going anywhere, kind of just winging it. That's really awesome, but it's not a super great way to build a sustainable business because in the long run, you kind of have to have those stepping stones to be able to get you to these different places. So when you're looking at your mission, you really want to look at why you are turning this into a business, right? Why are you taking the side hustle and turning it into business? Why do you exist? What are you known for? What do you do with your, for your customers? How are you helping them? What are your different values? And what do you value in your personal life, but also how that translates into your business? Um, so our mission here at Brittany & Co. is really to solve the operations problems of small businesses so that they can solve the problems of the world. And we kind of want to just create this ripple effect because the more efficient a business owner is able to be in their business, the better they're able to serve their customers. And it's kind of just continuing from there. Um, so making sure you know what your mission and why you started this, because it's going to drive a lot of things in your business. Then kind of looking at your vision and seeing where you want this thing to even go. What is that big picture? Where are you looking for this to be in five years? Um, and it might seem kind of crazy to think five and 10 years from now, but looking at that again, has that you kind of have that roadmap in place so that you know where you're getting to. Then really diving into kind of your ideal client and customer. And um, this was something that I did not do really, really well when I first started, um, like completely nailing down who your target market is and being able to completely explain them in great, great detail, knowing exactly who they are, exactly what their habits are. Um, you've probably seen uh, people talk about ideal client, ideal client avatar maybe, um, but you have to kind of give that person a name and know everything about them and always be doing market research on who your customer is. Whether you have a product or a service, you have to know who that person is that is purchasing those things. Uh, because if you don't or you get out of touch with them, you could be doing things that aren't serving your target audience. Then diving in and looking at your goals and really strategizing and mapping this out, um, I tell everybody to kind of reverse engineer everything. So again, looking at that really, really big picture, so maybe that 10 year or that five year mark, where do you want that to go? Because that's gonna allow you to say, okay, now I have to do A, B, C, and D to be able to get to this big picture goal. So for example, one of my goal or some of my goals that I have for BCO is that I want to help a thousand entrepreneurs with my program. 
I want to continue my process for profit podcast because I love providing value, uh, creating a retreat so that we can go to a beach somewhere and create processes and efficiency. Uh, I want to write a book at some point. I want to bring on team members. So knowing all of these different goals and things that I have allows me to kind of reverse engineer and say, okay, so to help a thousand entrepreneurs and put them through my program, I need to do A, B, C, and D. To go and write a book, I need to do A, B, C, and D. So as you can see, starting from the big picture and working your way backwards, that kind of gives me my day-to-day -day things that I need to be working on to achieve those goals. So the, the vision, mission, goals, your ideal client, all of that stuff plays so much into uh, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis as you're growing your business. And it, it really, really is helpful when you have that big picture when things get hard because they probably will if you're turning it into a business. Um, you're going to hit road bumps and hurdles and things that you have to kind of overcome. And if you know that big picture and you are like all in on that mission, it's going to be a lot easier to continue pushing through. Uh, so again, this is all just kind of like standard uh, foundational pieces of a business, but they're super, super important to grow something. Um, I also break it up my tasks and projects into three different buckets, and this helps a lot with time management, calendar management, and just productivity in general. Um, basically, I've got the BCO buckets, and the B stands for business development, the C is client or customer services, and the O is operations. So essentially, everything that you do is going to fall into those three buckets. Business development really is anything that's helping you grow your business. So this could be partnering with people to maybe go to a trade show. This could be partnering with people to sell a product or service. Um, all of your different marketing, social media things that you do, workshops, teaching, um, essentially anything that's helping you to grow your business. The client customer services, anything that falls into that bucket would be for maybe client um, customer service. This could be for product fulfillment if you have a product, um, backend project management for your client if you offer a service, basically anything that relates to your customers. And then operations is all the other stuff, all the admin stuff that no one likes to do, uh, the email management, the team management, project management, um, all of that back end stuff we talked about as far as the legal pieces of your business. That's kind of where that falls. So really having a strategy around those three buckets and how much time you're going to spend in each area is going to help you to turn this into a business and grow your business. Okay, awesome. So we dived, we're getting to my favorite part now. I'm getting excited. Uh, we dived into kind of those business basics and kind of that foundation that you need to have, then the strategy and making sure that you have some really great plans in place so that you can um, grow the business and start to kind of see those goals come to life. Now we're going to dive into some of the actual systems and tools that you need um, to be able to manage all of those moving parts as you're starting to grow this into a business. So some of the key things that I think that every business owner needs to have, uh, whether you're service-based, product-based, uh, the first thing is your bookkeeping software. Now, this may seem scary, especially creatives. I know we don't like numbers. We don't want to look at that. Uh, but the numbers and finances are kind of the lifeblood of business. So we kind of have to have a pulse on that. Um, uh, this is not my most favorite topic either. I actually outsource my bookkeeping because I absolutely hate it. Um, but if you're just getting started and you're just getting into business, you want to look at having some sort of software to manage all of that in one spot. Um, so this would be all of your money coming in, your money going out and keeping track of those expenses. Uh, this is important because obviously we can write off a lot of expenses, especially if you're self-employed and you have your own business, you want to make sure that you're keeping track of costs and things like that. Um, there are some really awesome softwares that will do this for you. Wave is a really great one that's completely free. Uh, you can do all of your bookkeeping and tracking your numbers, but also do invoicing. So if you need to invoice for products or services, you can do that through that software. Uh, there's another one called Zero that's pretty inexpensive. I want to say it's like $9 per month that does a lot of the same things. Uh, or QuickBooks Self-Employed if you want to look at doing the QuickBooks route. If you're looking to grow your business into something big, uh, I do suggest QuickBooks and 
That's why the strategy comes into play so much is that uh, if you know one of your goals is to grow this to something big, that's going to help you make a better decision as to which bookkeeping software you need. Um, so making sure that you have that in place is super, super key. And then another piece to the financial side of things would be credit card processing. So whether you have a service-based business, product-based business, whatever that looks like, uh, most people want to have an option to pay with credit card nowadays. Uh, it's just easier. It's just faster. And, um, you just pretty much have to have it if you're going to run a business. So there's a couple different places that you can use for credit card processing. Stripe and PayPal are probably the top two most popular. Um, if you do anything and you're collecting money, most likely you're using PayPal. Most of the bookkeeping softwares will connect in with these uh, credit card processors so that those payments automatically get pulled into your bookkeeping software, which is really nice. Um, something else you want to have, and most of you probably do because I think everyone needs a calendar to keep track of things, right? Um, having some sort of digital calendar software is super, super key, especially if you are uh, a service-based business, you got to keep track of meetings and appointments. But even if you're turning this into a product-based business, you're probably likely to have lots of different meetings and things that you need to keep track of as well. Uh, my favorite's Google Calendar. I'm a Google girl, but um, obviously you've got different options on your phone. If you have an iPhone, you've got Apple Calendar. So there's lots of different options for all of these things. You really just have to kind of find what works for you and what works for your goals, but looking at some sort of calendar software to be able to keep yourself organized. The next one is managing your tasks because we all have 8 million to do's that we have to keep track of, whether that be for your business, your personal life, your social life. We have all these things that we want to keep track of. Um, I use a tool called Asana. I used to use a tool called Trello. I actually have a whole course that teaches you how to use Trello. Um, they have options inside of Evernote to keep track of to-dos. They have all kinds of apps. Again, you have a million options for different things, but you need to find something to manage your tasks. Now, I suggest a software or something that's digital just because I think it's easier to track your tasks on the go. Uh, you can use your phone to add things to your to-do list. You can be anywhere and essentially add things so that nothing gets forgotten. Um, but as business owners, keeping track of tasks is even more magnified than if you just kind of have that side hustle. Because if you've got the side hustle, you're turning into a business, you're gonna have a lot more tasks to keep track of. And if you don't have a software like this or something to keep track of your tasks in, it could be difficult to kind of move forward on those goals and stay productive. Um, I know a lot of people, especially creatives really like writing. So if you have a planner, like a written planner or a notebook that you use for tasks that works too. Um, I actually have a whole routine that I help people move paper into digital just so that it's more accessible. Uh, but as long as you're keeping track of them somewhere and you have some sort of system, I feel like you're in a good place. So. Uh, some of the other systems and things you should probably think about as you're turning this into a business also are your kind of website, social media sites. Now, if you're just getting started and um, don't have funds to create a website, you totally don't have to. Uh, with Facebook and all of our social media accounts and things that we can do, uh, you can showcase what you do and show what you offer without having to have a full-blown website. But just know that having a website is also a really great option for being able to kind of showcase what you're, what you're offering. Um, there are a bunch of templates that you can do too. Some of the website sites would be like Wix. They've got one, Weebly, Squarespace, all of those types of things. Um, if you're brave and good at WordPress, go for it. Uh, I had to pay somebody to do my WordPress site because the tech stuff's not my jam. But um, if you're starting on the very basics, you can definitely just use your social media sites for marketing what you offer. Um, another tool that I really, really love, and especially if you're starting a business and you're wanting to put social media posts out is Canva. It's actually a graphic creation tool that will allow you to use your creativity and make really pretty posts for your social media sites to show people what you offer. Um, with Canva, they have a free account. They also have a paid account, but you can essentially go in and use one of their thousands of templates to create really great um, content to share with your audience to show people what you do. 
Uh, and the last two here are not technically tools or systems, but uh, make sure you have really great routines in place as a business owner. Uh, this is where I think a lot of creatives, it's really hard for them to get into routines, especially as they're moving into creating this as a business um, because they want to be creative and they just want to go with the flow, right? But having really good daily routines for your morning routine, your kind of end of day or wrap up routine, and then planning routines is going to actually make sure that you're moving forward towards those goals and those big picture plans that you've set. Um, so making sure you have a solid morning routine in place as far as the business goes. Now, obviously you can have your own personal morning routine and your coffee and your meditation and your journaling and all of that good stuff, but making sure that when you sit down to do things for the business, that you kind of have that routine in place. Um, some of the other things I suggest is, uh, no email in the morning because email is a productivity killer. <laughs> um, and I also turn off my email notifications. So I try to not check my email until I've done a couple like big tasks in the morning that are related to the business, but, um, making sure you have a good morning routine, making sure that email is not a distraction for you. And then having a really great end of day routine to make sure you've kind of wrapped up your day in a nice little bow. I have a whole system for my end of day routine called the three P's of productivity. Um, I could probably talk on that for 20 minutes, so I won't dive into that, but essentially I am processing my day to make sure that I've gotten everything done. And then I'm planning for the next day and preparing everything I need for the following day. So um, just making sure you have really great routines in place is going to help you scale this business once you've turned it into a business because you're actually moving forward and being productive. Then I have a 90 day planning routine, and this is essentially kind of like what we talked about in the strategy, making sure that everything's fitting back into that mission and those visions that I had. Um, I map out the goals that I have for the rest of the year. I'm actually getting ready to dive into this since we're getting ready to hit a new quarter, but I'll look at my goals that I haven't hit yet for the year, and I make sure to map those out. After I've done that, I dive in and say, okay, out of those things, what can happen in the next three months? What can I get done in the next 90 days? Uh, because we can't do everything. <laughs> Even though we try, we try to do all the different projects and things and everything, and it just doesn't work. So what can I get done in the next three months? Then I look at those projects and say, okay, now what tasks are associated with those and how can I map this out in the next 90 days? So again, it just goes back to reverse engineering and making sure that you have that end goal in mind and you know that these things are moving you forward in growing your business. So um, really... This is kind of like the meat of it is the systems in the back end that is going to help you stay organized and stay in a place that you can keep running this as a business instead of kind of just winging it and throwing spaghetti at the wall, which a lot of us do. I did for, you know, like the first two and a half years of my business, um, but really having these great routines in place and these systems to help you manage all the moving parts in the back end of your business. And I don't know how I am on time, Craig, but I think I'm wrapping up. Yeah. Um, so really as a kind of wrap up there, the legal and financial and like business basics are super important to have as the kind of baseline structure for your business. And then making sure you have that strategy in place and knowing your strategy and your mission and your vision and your goals so that you know what you're moving towards. And then really making sure that you have those tools and systems in place to help keep you organized as a business owner and making sure that you're moving forward in growing this.